Welcome back everybody. This is Daniel with Champion Industries. And in this video, we are gonna cover the complete proper NSF guideline for testing the temperatures on your commercial dishwasher. Let's roll right into it. Item number one is actually broken into three pieces. First part of that is to check the inside of the machine for excessive soil buildup. Now, since this machine is off, we also have a prime opportunity to look inside the tank at our heating elements to make sure that there's not an excessive buildup of lime scale. Once we've got those checked, we'll move on to item number two. Now, this is an electric machine, but if it were a gas machine we're working with, we would wanna check all those jets just to make sure that they're all firing correctly. That way the machine can achieve the proper temperature. Now, the third item, if this were a vented machine, we would wanna make sure the vent was on and running properly. Now, since this is a ventless machine, I don't have to worry about that in this situation. Now, nice little tidbit for the wise out there. So break out your red crayon. Too much ventilation can be a bad thing. So that's one of the things to check for. If there's no other fans or anything like that in the room, and if for some reason that vent fan is pulling way too much heat out of the machine, that could need to be addressed. Now, another thing, and I just kind of hinted at that a moment ago, if you look over in the corner of the room and you see some big giant barrel fan blowing air straight through the machine, that's a big red flag as well. What that's doing is actually pushing the heat out of the machine, and we wanna keep as much heat inside the machine as possible. That way it achieves the proper temperatures. Once we've got all those checked, the next thing we need to do, possibly the most important thing, is turn the machine on and let it warm up. So I'm gonna do that now. And we'll come right back. So now we waited for our machine to warm up. So the next item on the NSF guidelines is to run a couple of racks through the machine, two to be exact. So what we need to do is fire this machine up, hit start, and we need to put a rack through and run two completely full through the, or completely through the machine. And I don't mean one back to back, I mean what one start and go all the way through, take it out, and then let another one go all the way through. Or in the case of a batch style machine, like an undercounter or a door style machine, we'd need to let it run its first cycle, open up the door, close the door, or up and down, and then go ahead and start a second cycle of that run completely. And so what we're doing in that, NSF understands the mechanics of how dishwashers work. Again, we're not talking about just Champion here, we're talking about any of our other uh, fine competitors out there, is we're not just heating up water, we're heating up all this stainless steel. Because when that wash tank comes, or that wash pump comes on, we take all that nice hot water, but we're spraying it over cold stainless steel, which absorbs a lot of that heat. So what they're allowing us is to do is to warm up that metal as well, that way the machine can hold temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple of racks through this machine and we'll come right back. All right, so item three in our NSF guidelines says that we need to check the temperature in the wash tank, as well as if this were a multi-tank machine and it had a powered rinse or a auxiliary rinse on the machine, we would need to check that tank as well. And we can do that simply by opening up the doors, taking one of the scrap screens out and taking our nice little thermometer and just dipping it right down into that water and verifying those temperatures. NSF guidelines say for the checking the final rinse temperature that we could look at that inlet manifold and take that temperature right there. Now, next up, what we're gonna do is go ahead and verify our surface temperature by running a rack through with either our test strips on a clean dry plate or I can run my maximum holding thermometer, our lollipop mon uh, thermometer through the machine. So let's check that. All right, so we finished up running our rack through our machines. We're gonna check our handy dandy thermometer here. We are doing just fine on temperature. And that was item number four, which says to run your thermometer through the machine and ensure that you hit that 160 degree uh, minimum surface temperature to ensure sanitization. So we've checked all of our temperatures. Item number five goes into a little more detail about how you can uh, have that uh, thermometer go through the machine or either put it somewhere inside the machine, maybe rubber band it. Uh, and in the end of number four, we talk a little bit about attaching thermal labels. It's as simple as sticking one to a clean, dry plate, running it through the machine. Uh, in item number, and that was item number five, and so item number six just gives us a one to two degree uh, leeway, understanding the nature of thermo thermometers and how they, you know, just a little bit for accuracy. 
So with that, I'll put a link to the NSF guidelines down below. And if you have any questions about temperatures, taking temperatures on machines, if your customers have any questions, you can always give us a call or get in touch with us on www.championindustries.com. Thanks for taking the time to learn with us today. Oh,